I don't want to overeat since I'm on a cut right now. It's just so soft. Try to cut less first. You think it's gonna taste okay. good? Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am so bad at vlogging, I just realized. Even after though, I've, even after though, even though I've been doing this for so freaking long, I don't know why, I just, I don't know. I just suck at this. I was watching other people and their vlogs and they just talk so much, talk the whole time. And I feel like I'm just so in my head. And then if I'm not talking, then I have a resting bitch face. <laughs> and so I was just like, I can't use any of this footage. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just awkward. Okay. So I just went to the gym. I had a really good chest day. It was our secondary bench. So we didn't go that heavy. It was just good. Things were just moving well. If you guys don't know, training for strength is a little bit different than training for hypertrophy, just meaning that you're trying to grow muscle. When an exercise slows down, you are eliciting, eliciting more muscle growth, but strength adaptations are not as good because there's a trade-off in terms of like feeling overly tired, AKA fatigue, but yeah. So I'm gonna show you what I do. Whoa. Sorry, everything is so dirty, blah. <laughs> Don't judge me, this is gross. I will clean this, oh, I'll clean this now. It's kind of disgusting. And there's nothing in here. Ugh. Now I have to go all the way upstairs. <laughs> you could come with me while I talk about this. What was I gonna say? And people are always like, I get any bigger oh, you're too bulky ultimately that comes down to your nutrition in terms of like gaining mass but for me it's like I don't need to get any bigger and I want to get as strong as possible as fast as possible and so I need to allow my body to adapt to the training. So a lot of people just go into the gym and they're trying to push heavy ass weight over and over and over. And this is what we call overshooting. Oh my gosh, there's stuff in here. <laughs> this is not meant to be, I'm just not meant to be a cleaner. Oh, there we go. Just hold it straighter. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> Anyways, what I was saying, people tend to overshoot because getting those like PRs and lifting heavier weights, that all feels really good. But at the same time, when you constantly try to increase the weight and the velocity in which you're pushing is slowing down, then you you might not be, you might not be, a what, oh, my words. <laughs> I drank enough caffeine today. You might not be, a you're not allowing yourself. There you go. That's, <laughs> oh my gosh. You're not allowing your body to adapt to the new stimulus in order for you to have the strength gains because the muscle that you have in itself, there's two different things. Like you can get bigger, bigger muscle versus more neural recruitment. So that same muscle size can push more weight. It was really hard going from a beginner lifter into going into being an intermediate lifter where I was just like, okay, I can't be adding weight all the time. I just need to slow down and just try to focus on acceleration. So that's the biggest difference I feel like. Instead of always adding weight, I'm just like, okay, how do I lift this better with better form and faster? Like, I don't want it to be a grinder. Like, yes, that's cool that I can grind things out, but I don't want it to have to be like that. This is a post-workout meal. This is super easy to do. I actually just put this in the microwave and I forgot what it's called in Korean, but it's like, steamed egg, Korean steamed egg. Maybe I'll just do the usual 300. 329. And I actually wanted to see if this was accurate because 
Ew, don't look at this, this is so dirty. But this is the one I usually use at home and I was gonna use this to travel cause it closes like this and I could like put it in my pocket. Um, but I just wanna see if it's accurate. So this was 337. I'm gonna put this on, zero this out. Huh, 316, let's see, okay. Oh, 314. Okay, it's pretty much the same. And I said, I think I originally said 337, right? Log that onto my thing, clear it out. And then the next thing I do is I add bone broth and I usually do half of whatever the weight of the eggs were. So 337, so I usually do about 150 or 160. And this gives it this really soft, and velvety texture kind of reminds me of silk and tofu. This is, I probably won't finish this. This is a lot of food. 156. Oh, and then I also got a lazy Susan. Oh my gosh, I love it. I don't know why it took me so long to get it. And then, oh, stand in and take the thing off. And then I just put a little bit of garlic salt on there, saran wrap it, and then put it in the microwave for about three minutes, three and a half minutes. And then this is what it looks like. I tend to like, jiggle it a little bit. This looks like it's still too liquidy. So put it in for another 30 seconds. All right, this is the consistency that you want. See the jiggle? Yes. And if you feel like it's a little bit more jiggly, like it's still hot, just leave it in there for a few seconds or a minute or whatever. But I think that this is, this is good for us, so. I had to jiggle it for a second to see if like this is the consistency I want. Usually I eat this like every single day for lunch just cause it's so easy. Like as you saw, literally just in the microwave for a few minutes and then I add in some rice and then I add in fish sauce and it becomes like a congee. In Vietnamese it's called jiao, but basically it's just like a rice porridge. I have leftover vegetable curry. I should have added more cabbage to this. It looks like more curry and less vegetables because I, I ate all the vegetables. So this is not as flavorful, you know, like there's a little bit of garlic salt in here, but it's not like bursting with flavor. So I'm just gonna add this. 192, done. So overall, this is 377 calories to, <laughs> Dude, I can't even read off this thing. What's wrong with me? 377 calories, 26.5 grams of carbs, 42.5 protein and 6.7 fat. Yeah, not bad. And this is huge. Like this is four cups of food. Let's take a picture of this because people are asking like what I'd be eating and stuff. It looks, why can't I take a good picture of this? That's ugly. Damn it. Why? It looks so much better here. Okay, maybe if I do one of these light things. Mm -mm. Nope, nope. Just not good at taking pictures. Oh God. <laughs> it's so ugly. This is why I can't be one of those Instagram foodies. I don't know how to take pictures. I guess that's better. So I'm just gonna eat this. We're gonna take a shower. So look at this. This is the tofu or not tofu. It has tofu consistency, but this is the egg whites. I love it so much. I can eat this forever. I have been for months. It's just so soft. Easy to eat, digestible. It tasted better when I had cabbage. I'm too lazy to boil cabbage right now. <laughs> Okay, I just got out of the shower. These bangs, so recently. <laughs> so I feel like these bangs 
have influenced so many of you guys to get bangs and they're getting longer. So I wanna show you how I trim them. What I do is you kind of want to have like a V taper. So I go from here and I go all the way towards the top of my ears, or at least that's what my mom does. And she's a hairstylist. So don't come at me if this is wrong. Proceed at your own risk. And then let me just clip this part up. Okay. So the sides are more for just blending. You see how I did a really bad job at blending this side, but the front right here is a little bit too long. So what I do, these are my scissors. Don't ask me where I got them because my mom got them for me. I'm pretty sure they're hair scissors. <laughs> they're professional hair scissors, okay? As you can see, I'm only taking like the middle part of my hair and I'm gonna try to cut this part first. And you know how your head is like a dome? Because then if you cut it this way, then all the hairs are gonna fall here and it's gonna be a super blunt cut across. If you hold it up here at a 90 degree angle, the hairs that are on top here are gonna fall a little bit lower than the hairs that are on the bottom here are gonna be a little bit longer. Does that make sense? just because of the way your head is shaped. So less is more, try to cut less first, and then you can always do more after. So, here, that feels like it's a lot. See, like so. Moment of truth, <laughs> let go. See, it's still a little bit long and remember that you're gonna straighten it. So actually hold please, let's spray. And this is just a thermal protector. You could use any thermal protector you want. I use Pantene Pro-V. What I do when I straighten it is I grab these and I don't go straight down. I think you can see it better from the side. I pull up and then I go straight. And then it becomes this thing. <laughs> and then I just go like this. See? And then anything that is kind of um, too long, sticking out like this, then I would go in and um, grab these guys and kind of cut at an angle. And it's probably better not to like pull on your hair when you do it. Remember that your hair, if you pull on it, it's gonna spring back up and then it's gonna be too low. And anywhere that I feel like this, if it's too chunky right there, then I'll go in and kind of cut upwards a little bit. And that's it. I know some people like just like to go straight across and then start um, debulking like this, but like I like how when I pull it up, there's already some layering in there. Then when I put my hair down, it just looks like this. And that is how I trim up my bangs. So this is how I wear my hair most of the time now. I have these claw, claw clips. I can link the ones that I got. They're just like from Amazon. And then I go have my hair like this, circle and up. Like so. And then I like to pull it out. Like I like it looking effortlessly messy. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Maybe I could ask my mom when I go home to see her. Um, but yeah, this is, this is how I trim my bangs myself. And as you can see, it was like super fast. So tag me if you cut your bangs. And I really wanna see, cause bangs are in now. 
I feel like everybody's getting them. And they're so cute. Okay, we're about to have meal number two. And I always tell this to my patients that I want you to check in with yourself often because most of the time people just try to starve themselves, starve as in like hold off on eating food for as long as they can. And by the time you're ready to eat, you're overly hungry and you'll end up eating more than you meant to. This is more on a subconscious level. So people are always thinking that I'm blaming them for eating too much. No, this is not because of you, babes. This is your genetics, your psychological reptilian brain. So I'm not saying it's your fault. I'm just saying that this is a normal body response. So right now I'm not hungry and I can probably wait for another hour to eat, but I feel like I'm getting there. And so I don't want to overeat since I'm on a cut right now. So I'm just gonna add some rice into this bowl that I did not, this Tupperware that I did not wash <laughs> from earlier. I'm gonna heat this up. Oh, we're out of cheese. And then I just browned some ground beef. This is 97.3 beef. If you can pick leaner versions just because you're eating the same amount of volume and just less fat. If you need more fat, it's probably better to add in kind of like olive oil and things like that. It's a better fat source than say saturated fats. I'm probably not gonna eat all this meat. And then to flavor this, I put in some oyster sauce and some garlic powder, onion powder. And then I'm gonna put a cheese on top. Do it when it's still hot so that it can melt the cheese. And if you're too late, then probably put it in the microwave a little bit. I just like melted cheese. Yes, melt. So this is what meal number two looks like. I know not the most exciting. And then I'll probably eat this apple. Oh, it's bruised. There's a macros. All right, Summer. Are you ready to go on a walk? <laughs> I know you're so excited, huh? Raincoat on. Sit. Her, um, good girl. Okay, girl, let's go. just got back to walking summer and it was so funny because Stan was going on his way out to get groceries when I was walking summer and then right when I was coming out I see this dad running with a dog and a stroller and with like this covering over the stroller and, and I turned to Stan I was just like see that's was the dad that I was thinking of getting and because he's always like, oh, I don't want to go outside. I can't do anything because the Seattle weather is so gloomy and rainy. And it comes to a certain point where it's like you're making up excuses for not doing things. Like there are plenty of people here who live in the Pacific Northwest who do lots of things, who go outdoors and we live in the same environment. So you don't want to do things so you make excuses that you don't like you can't right but you can you technically can you just need to get the right equipment to go i love listening to audiobooks you guys already know that i'm listening to the courage to be disliked look i actually like take notes i've been reading like smut <laughs> Um, basically romance rom-com because it helps me like escape from reality and it just makes me feel 
I don't know, happy? Anyways, um, I used to be on like this mental health, self-help books and all these things and I haven't listened to anything in a while because I felt like a lot of them just like repeated themselves over and over again. So it's actually been a while that I've had a mental health book that I've been like, this is, this changes a lot of things. This makes things click. Like I understand life now. It changes my worldview and it takes the rose colored glasses off. Does it make sense? Like, does any book ever like change your perspective on life? I feel like the this is one of those books. If you have any book recommendations, do let me know. I love reading books and listening to audiobooks. All right, oops, shoot. <laughs> now it's for dinner. I feel like we rotate over the same meals all the time. And today we're gonna have, what is it? The tacos, Crunch Wrap Supreme from like Taco Bell. It's at, at home. Ooh. So Wyatt just likes the taco meat and then we put it over rice. And for Stan and I, we make crunch wrap supremes. Hi London, you wanna put the chair over here and then you can stand next to mommy. These are called your aromatics. You learn how to cut at school? Yeah. I only do sh not sharp knives at my school. Then how do you cut it if it's a not sharp knife? It's just not on the bottom. It's too sharp, so I won't touch the bottom of it. Oh, okay. So so I only touch the top of it because the top of it was not spiky. So I, the only thing I can touch is the knife on the bottom. I'm going to put my chair right here so you don't... Sorry, you might not hear me because the fan is in the background, but we got to turn on the fan because we have a gas stove. And whenever you turn on this gas, it emits all these bad things that is bad for the lungs, okay? And then you drizzle a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil in. Made like one drop of it. <laughs> oh, definitely not one drop of it. Okay, I'm not touching the top. Okay. Literally, I get caught up by all hands. Here, you can mix it's this around. It's definitely going to come me like this. Okay. It's too hard for me. It's not hard for you, you got it. Oh. There you go. Keep going. I don't know how to stir. Yeah, you can stir like this. Okay. Yeah, but no pro at stirring. Yeah, well, nobody starts out being a pro. You just gotta practice. That's how you become a pro. Yeah, but when I practice, I always mess up. It's okay, that's the whole point. You mess up so you can learn. If you don't mess up, then you're never gonna learn. Yeah, we played our goal. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I'm gonna go broke feeding three boys. We oh. have two and a half pounds of extra lean beef, 97.3. Mash that thing up. Mom, is that the oyster sauce? Yeah, that's the oyster sauce. So instead of just putting it in, I like to put the salt in my hand and then I like to pinch it and put it in. Go ahead. Can you get mommy the taco seasoning behind you? Oh yeah, okay, I'll do both of them. Yeah, that's good. Oh, careful, just dump it down, okay? That's good. Yeah, there you go. You did good. Now I'm so hungry. Yay. If I'm so hungry, I want to eat all of that. Pizza. <laughs> okay, once it is kind of all a little bit browned, I like to set it like this and it will char the bottom. You see how there's a lot of meat, so the sides right here, it's it's still kind of steaming. So you let that evaporate a little bit and then it'll char the bottom. Before you add in your um, bone broth. Can I help you? Or you got it? I got Go it. Go gently. Thank you. So the great thing about like prepping all this meat is that you can save it for later. You know how I said like we're making crunch wrap supremes. You can make burritos, you can make stir fry. You can make taco meat. <laughs> you can change up the vegetables that you're eating with the meat or add that cheese on top like I was talking about earlier. So there's lots of different varieties that you can do. You just have to make a ton of meat. So that's what I do. Don't prep your meals, just prep your ingredients. So this is what Wyatt will eat. <laughs> Rice, taco meat, and a side of veggies. Yes, I love tacos. 
<laughs> smells so good. You want to try it? Smell it. Smell it. Mmm. Oh, cool. These are a little bit smaller than what we usually do. Um, these are the carb balance ones. Each one of these is 70 calories. The extreme ones, I think those are 50 calories, so not that much of a difference. I mean, if you're gonna eat a million of them, then maybe it's gonna add up, but either way, both are good. This is white flour. Basically, you go like this. You want, you want one of these? Okay, here you go. Hello. I got a beard. <laughs> Ooh, yes. Ooh, yes. That will work. Crispy. Hot. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is not going to fit. Is it going to work? This is not going to work. So what you're going to do is you're going to crunch this up. And then you're going to roll it like Chipotle, how Chipotle rolls, rolls your burritos. And this burrito is 250 calories. Mmm. Mm -mm. Just as good. This is my second burrito. It's like as big as my face. I just want you to see like massive and in total this i had two it's 440 calories oh and that's everything i ate today in a calorie deficit just ending my night with some journaling let me know what you guys want to see next week peace